Welcome to Bigfoot, Terror in the Woods, Sightings and Encounters. I'm your host, W.J. Sheehan. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your busy day and spending them with me. The following account is entitled The Chain Gang Sighting. This account was told to me by Reggie Tex Jefferson about an encounter that he and a dozen other inmates had while incarcerated in the late 60s. Here is what Tex had to say. It was in 1966 that I had been arrested for and convicted of Grand Theft Auto. The saying goes that if you commit the crime, you will do the time, and do the time I did. I was sentenced to five years of hard labor. The area where this sighting had occurred was in the northeast section of Louisiana during the latter portion of 1967. Now, I'm not proud of what I was doing and who I was at that time, but as you know, Bill, I am a respectable member of society today, having paid my dues a long time ago. At the time, the warden had said to me that I wasn't perceived as being a threat, and so he assigned me to the chain gang to do road work. The vast majority of our work assignments could have been done by machinery, but where would the fun be in that? We broke our asses in the hot and humid sun, day in and day out, in retribution to society for our criminal activities. Most of what we were doing involved shoveling, raking, and removing litter. There was an armed guard with us at all times, and depending on who the assigned guard was, we could have a decent day or a real ball buster. It was late in the day, nearing quitting time, when two of the boys started to have a little shouting match. It was something to the effect of one accusing the other of throwing rocks at him. The guard immediately stepped in as the guy being accused stated that he hadn't thrown anything of the sort. Things kind of calmed down for a little bit when suddenly this guy got hit again right in the forehead. He was bleeding, so now there was no denying he had been hit with something, but by who? It was just seconds later, as the man was being attended to, that one of the other convicts said, Will you look at that mother jumper? He was pointing in the trees, and we all looked. Standing within a small opening in the woods, with its lower body concealed by the brush, was a large hairy beast which was about nine feet tall. All of us raised our shovels, preparing to defend ourselves if need be. The guard told us to put our shovels down and sit in a circle, which was something we all did reluctantly. The guard then took his shotgun and pumped two rounds right at the bastard. It screamed and ran off into the woods. Just before he popped him with two rounds of buckshot, this monster was rocking back and forth within the opening in the trees as we stood watching. I had never seen anything like it in my life, and after the fact, two of the cons said that it was a booger. I was sure the guard had hit him squarely because we watched him reeling backwards from the impact, and the noise it made as it ran away sounded like a screaming woman. Now, this may all sound a bit odd to some, but large animals can and do run great distances after having been shot, and this was one large critter. It had to have been all of eight or even nine feet tall and was at least four feet wide or more. It was covered in long grayish hair, and its body consisted of one muscle upon another. This gang that I was part of was a fairly rough crowd with one of the guys having been convicted of beating two men to death with his bare fists in a bar fight. Another had drowned his own brother over crashing his sports car. Still, all of us were visibly shaken by what we saw. 
We could hear this monster crashing off into the woods. The guard walked closer to see if he could see anything more of it, but it was long gone. On the ride back in the van, the fellow that told us it was a booger started to tell us what he knew about these creatures. He was originally from Kentucky and told us that there was a long history regarding these beasts going back hundreds of years in the region, some calling them hairy men and others calling them boogers. He said they were not to be fooled with. Many thought they were responsible for kidnapping children and killing people and livestock as well especially in the old Indian folklore accounts. A year later, I was released for good behavior. I will never forget the events of that day on the side of the road. I had always said that someday I would like to go back to that spot and just stand there, but to this very day, I have not done so. Until next time, remember, always carry more gun than you think you're going to need. Sleep tight.